This is The Culture. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Wave Podcast. We are here to talk to you guys about the number one movie currently on Netflix. It is Spaceman, starring Adam Sandler, Carrie Mulligan, and a voice role by Paul Dano. I am one of your hosts. My name is Darian Scalamoni. I am joined this time by Liz Seiko. Hello. And we're here to talk about Inter Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> this is Liz's suggestion. I think she saw it somewhere on all the memes. I did. So we'll go I with that. It, it made me laugh. It made me laugh it made as well. Me chuckle. <laughs> um, this is a movie that made my top 10 most anticipated list yeah <laughs> <laughs> makes me sad is it in your top 10 of this year no so far? <laughs> well well see like i only have one movie this year that i've really enjoyed mm -hmm. a lot so like that's the only one in that okay. tier for me what initially what, was like excited you about this well I had talked about it in that episode too check that episode out if you haven't watched it yet we talked about a lot of different movies on that episode that was a fun one but for this movie in particular, I really love seeing Sandler um, in dramatic roles. Like I, I love him in his comedic roles as well, but I like when he's able to balance the drama and the comedy and go kind of back and forth between the two because he's proven time and time again that he's a really great dramatic actor. Um, I've talked about it many times on here, but Uncut Gems is one of my favorite movies of all time. So ever since that movie as well, I'm just like addicted to wanting to see him do more dramatic work. And... This was a project – him and Carrie Mulligan was always intriguing to me because it's just a pairing that I never thought I would ever see. And Carrie Mulligan had my favorite performance of last year with Maestro. So those two coming together for something, plus Paul Dano voicing a spider? Like what? Super weird, super zany, so I had thought. Um, and basically, just to give, I guess, an – I'll just read the IMDb description, mm -hmm. but it's basically a story about he's a Czech. Uh, Adam Sandler plays a Czech astronaut by the name of uh, Jakob Prohaska, who is kind of isolated and he's waiting to um, finish out this mission uh, to get specimens from the Chopra cloud. Correct. Mm -hmm. And throughout this, he's missing his wife, who is played by Carrie Mulligan, and he's kind of having like – as soon as the movie starts, you can tell that like something is off with him and he's kind of struggling through and that builds as the movie goes on. And he basically hallucinates this uh, ginormous therapeutic spider um, who is voiced by Paul Dano. Um, and you didn't know all the specifics of the story. I mean, it's a fairly simplistic story. And you had talked off camera about the sort of interesting uh, direction we're going in with uh, sci-fi and just like loner astronaut movies in which all these people are isolated and they're dealing with their internal and their mental struggles, which I mean, we're not astronauts. We don't know what they go through. And I can imagine that that's a lot of what has happened to some in the past, maybe. Um, but just the premise and the talent attached always intrigued me. Mm -hmm. Um, and like I said, like the big thing for me is getting to see Sandler do something that's dramatic, um, was something that I want to see more of. So, it's unfortunate that, in my opinion, within this movie, it doesn't feel like it hits on all cylinders where I think a lot of his other performances, even something like Spanglish, which I think is like a decent movie. I think he's really great in it. But uh, this movie underwhelmed me for sure. How did you feel about it? This movie was mid, very mid. Uh, I think they try to cover some interesting life questions and topics of loneliness, relationship, marriage questions, um, kind of dealing with your past. I keep saying this. I said this off camera yesterday and today. This for me felt just like a therapy session that we as viewers were watching unveil kind of. Um, and I don't think it's a bad movie. I think it's just that the – I guess the – I mean, I, I don't even know maybe the promotion, but maybe it was my own fault that I was going in expecting something that was kind of a uh, funny, creepy, quirky film, kind of in the same vein of dream scenario, honestly, mm -hmm. where it was going to be taking us for a ride or like a little bit of a roller coaster of crazy events that unfold. Um, and this is not it. This movie is honestly a straight sci-fi drama, essentially. Um, it's heavy dialogue. It's not a lot of action. And I think that's where I, – I mean, I love a good heavy dialogue film. But I think that in order to make it a successful film, you need to have momentum going on and you need to have high stakes. 
somebody could argue with me that it is high stakes because he's alone and in a spaceship by himself venturing out into a cloud that nobody knows about. Um, he's clearly having some uh, mental issues while he's up there also. So maybe those are the stakes. But I just didn't feel connected to his character at all. I didn't really feel connected to Carrie Mulligan's character, which I was disappointed in because I love her as an actress. And I feel like she always brings something nuanced and different than you were expecting. But I don't know. It just felt very uh dull and it felt hard to get through yeah i think it's an interesting like social experiment as a film um where it feels sort of meditative and like you said very therapeutic where so much of it is built on conversation between sandler's character and this this anomaly like this crazy ginormous spider that's just floating uh, among this spacecraft while he's isolated and um He's he's already I believe he's like half a year into his mission. So he's been alone for a very long time. I think it, they said some like 160 days. OK, I, I think say. I think it's yeah, it's like anywhere between 160 and like 190. So yeah, it's I like, think, somewhere like that. Yeah. Um, But yeah, you would you would hope that. And I agree with you when I had first heard and in the first teaser they show you get like the first visual of the spider. And I thought similar, like maybe it could be something in the same tone as um like a dream scenario i mean this is a short film i think it's only an hour and 45 minutes yeah hour 48 i think something yeah. like that and there were moments about probably an hour and 10 minutes in that i was like i feel like they're just having the same conversation over and over again and we're doing a loop around um yeah so i mean i don't know i think i'd need to read the book in order to give sight into if it would if it was the script or maybe this is just a book that's not meant to be a film. Yeah. So you had brought something up off camera that this film has been in development. Well, it was, it was filmed, it was filmed wrapped and held on the shelf by Netflix for years now for th almost three years. Okay. So the other thing due to this, mixed reactions from test screen. Well, the other thing with me, especially because now that I know that the novel came out so recently, I'm interested to know if Netflix wanted to get on board with this sort of genre that we're in right now with like these loner male led astronaut sort of things like an ad Astra, like a, like Zach had brought up like a first man with Ryan Gosling. Mm -hmm. And maybe because that was like the hot property. Like I remember after all those movies came out, there was like a lot of other like sci-fi novels just kind of getting picked up and things with like loner Astra. I mean, the Martian, was another yeah. one. I mean, Interstellar, you had brought up. So I'm curious if it was because the novel was hot and Netflix wanted to take it and then also give a new writer a shot because this movie is written by Colby Day and this is the first major thing that he had ever done, which I guess we, a lot of the movie, I, I don't want to say the movie, like I don't want to say it's like so much is negative about the movie, but I do think the weakest part of the film is the script mm -hmm. because it does feel like even in those moments where Sandler's trying to learn more about himself in the universe, so much of it is subdued to a level where you had said like, it's very one note and the tone doesn't change at all. And you're not learning anything. You're not empathetic towards his character. And it just feels on the same, even keel the whole time. And it almost feels like you're listening to like, um, like a visualized version of like an insight timer, you know, like the app, the insight timer. It's like a medita no, meditation app. Oh, it's when like it's like low kind of lulls you into a meditation. And, and, and then there's like very like sporadic, soft tonal like yeah. things. Well, that was his voice the whole time yeah. at uh, Paul Dano's voice. Um, I mean, very comforting as the spider, like very comforting voice. But to listen to that for an hour and 45 minutes, you stop picking up on key words and topics and it kind of just starts glazing over a little bit um which again i don't i think that the core conversation that they're trying to have in this film and they're trying to cover a lot they're not just focusing on like a marriage question they're also focusing on like childhood and uh letting go of griefs that you have against your parents from when you're younger and uh loneliness and learning to love yourself and so there's these these are big topics to hold in a film alone um but again with a film you want to show visually those things happening so that when the viewer walks away, they can remember what they were seeing versus what they were listening to. Because 
although I'm walking away knowing that this these topics are what they talked about, I don't know exactly what they wanted me to walk away thinking about these topics. You know? Yeah, I, I thought that um, we talked a little bit off camera about this. The flashback sequences that are seen through basically the eyes of Janusz, the spider, um, as Jakob is, a, is an interesting experiment by the DP, but mm -hmm. I think it's not effective. And I think that it's something that also in terms of the movie being so um, constrictive when you do something like that to sh sort of give the exposition of the character and what he's gone through in the past and things like that. And I do th like, I don't know. It hurt. We talked, this is just because Carrie Mulligan's on my mind too. Like in Maestro, they did such a great job of showcasing their chemistry because of the way that they shot that movie and mm -hmm. the way they showcased distance and the way their characters went through a change and things like that. This movie for so much of it being on the shoulders of, Jakob's relationship or lack thereof with Lenka, so much of that is lost in this version of the movie. Like, I don't know if there was mm -hmm. a different version. The other thing that I think is really interesting, because you brought up the marketing for a second, they were marketing this movie with the same images of Sandler in the uh, cosmonaut suit on that planet mm -hmm. that he's literally in for the first 30 seconds of the movie and then a minute and a half at the end. Yeah. And I don't like that. Because they're already portraying something to audiences that is entirely not what the movie is. Well, yeah, because you're watching this. And you're, you're thinking think it's like an expedition. Sorry. Yeah. To, but it's like it's an expedition of an astronaut and he's maybe stranded on a planet. And then maybe, again, he could be having these hallucinogenic sort of experiences with a spider. Like, I don't like how contained it was all on the spacecraft either. Well, it like, was misleading. Yeah. And I, I will say, though, this film's getting a lot of views more than I expect for how mid it is in my opinion but i think it's because people are watching they're seeing on netflix oh number one on netflix right now a new sandler movie let's watch it i don't think people are making it through this whole movie i think people are probably getting halfway through and are like oh god i can't i can't watch any more of this and, and i think the thing that sucks personally is i thought the second half of the movie started to pick up a little bit like i definitely liked the second half of the movie like the mm -hmm. back end maybe the last 30 minutes better than the for a lot of what happened in the beginning well yeah i mean are we are we gonna get talk spoilers at this yeah point? we get to, okay. yeah if you watch this movie if you haven't watched if this you movie, haven't watched this movie and you decide you want to spaceman it's on netflix we talked about it already it's We're not bad spoil the movie. it's just it's 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 heavy yeah it's got a lot a lot going on but anyways i think that it starts to pick up when you realize that uh yanush potentially might be dying at this point is when he's like, oh, I have to tell you something. Like, I wasn't fully honest with you. Mm -hmm. And he's like, my planet, what I told you about it isn't true. I'm actually kind of sick. And like these, I don't remember the word that he said, but it's pretty much like these bugs are going to eat him alive, essentially. Yeah. And I think that's all of a sudden when you see the change in Jakob's character because he cares so much for Yunush that he's like, oh my God, I have to like care for this person. And the whole time I'm like, okay, so he has a stronger connection with the spider just, <laughs> than he out. does with his wife. Yeah, which I, I think is a, but I think that's a, that's a problem in direction too. Mm -hmm. um, Johan Renk directs this movie and he's best known for, so he actually, all right, so I apologize. He directed all five episodes of Chernobyl. I think Craig Mazin wrote it. Okay. Um, so the last thing he did prior to Spaceman was Chernobyl, which is regarded by many uh, as one of the greatest television series It's incredible. 9.3 on IMDb. Um, and before that, he had only done episodes of television and, and very sporadically. He did um, a show on Hulu called Shut Eye. He did an episode. He did two episodes of Bloodline for Netflix. He did an episode of Halt and Catch Fire. Bates Motel, three episodes of Viking Seated, three episodes of Breaking Bad. Um, so this being his first major feature film, I felt like there was a lack of real direction in terms of what story was he really trying to tell here. Mm -hmm. um, and I am I am kind of curious about the book because it's got to be a good book. I would have I'm to thinking. I would have to assume. And I, I can picture it again. I don't think this movie's bad. I just think that the mark was a little missed on making that transition from paper to film. Um, because I understand, I mean, I read books pretty often and I think any book that has questions like this does really well because they have the space and time for it. Mm. 
I mean, this is a, a, an hour and 45 minutes to cover all those heavy topics and make it like potent enough for people to walk away with a new opinion. It's hard. Yeah. And I just don't know. I mean, it's also a great cast. So it's like, what sold them on this? Sandler's connection with Netflix is very deep rooted. Yeah. And they've like, I, I don't want to say they saved his career, but like Zach all actually also brought up off camera. Like I think one of the last things he did prior to the Netflix deal was Jack and Jill, which is like the only movie that universally everybody's like, this is the worst fucking piece of trash in the history of movies. <laughs> but after that, like even some of these movies that um, probably wouldn't have done well in theaters, things like murder mystery, things like Hubie Hollow. Well, Hubie Halloween might be a little different because it's like a it's a holiday sort of movie. But he's done a number of movies that did incredible numbers on Netflix yeah. that would have never done the same in theaters. Um, and then even like Hustle, which was a uh, a dramatic movie in some aspects, not as dramatic and as um, emotional of a performance as he tried to give here, but it definitely had moments in it where you could see the dramatic tones come into it. But I don't think that movie gets made if Sandler doesn't have the connection with Netflix. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that mid-level movie is being made too much nowadays. I mean, we're starting to see that sort of hopefully turn around with production companies like Artist Equity and Lucky Chap and things like that to give more of an um, attention to story-based things again instead of like IP-driven everything. Um, but... I think that's another part of it. And you had brought up that you thought like you're like the movie's doing pretty well. It is doing well because I think Sandler is at the helm. Like he's he's in front. He's front and center. And he's on all the promotional images because he's in the move. He's in the whole movie. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, it's the worst performing movie of his career through the first week on Netflix. So I'm curious to see. I mean, we if, also have to talk about it was shelved for like. Th almost three years. So I want to know what was the catalyst for them to be like, that's the film we got to put out. I think maybe they just uh, sort of settled. And they were like, let's just do it. Yeah, I think that I I'm curious on how much of like if the movie's only an hour and 45 minutes, like how much editing did they have to do? How many reshoots did they have to do? Like reshooting that movie probably wasn't that hard because they were only in one location anyway. If mm -hmm. they had other aspects of it, I don't know. There's certain things that it feels like even on that planet, it feels like that's all they did there like there's no way there's not other footage of him on that planet doing other things like it's weird it just kind of comes out of nowhere um i don't know it's it's a it's a weird movie um did you like his performance or any aspects of it or <clears throat> i thought it was fine like I, I think that sandler's best quality in dramatic work is that he portrays emotion really well when he gets to that level like um the yanush thing towards the end like you can really see when he's dying when he's flying away yeah and and <laughs> and like yeah when he when he first starts set what does he say it well he's still in the spacecraft he goes he says something about feeling he's feeling nothing for the first time ever who, or so, Yanush? Yanush says that like something like that and he starts to drift away and yeah. then he like freaks out and then he's outside of the ship all of a sudden yeah and and I do think that he had a good quiet moment when he finally is speaking to Lenka on the phone when Peter goes and brings the phone to him mm -hmm. uh, or to her I should say so he has his moments but I just think he's a very talented actor and an incredibly underrated dramatic actor but every other performance dramatically I've seen from him I've like loved mm -hmm. and this I just was like it's fine um, like even something like, uh, Meyer with stories. I don't know if you've ever seen that on uh, Netflix. Yeah. I, I think he's great in that movie. And that even has like some comedic tones, but I mean, things like that, uncut gems, punch drunk, love moments and click. Like you can, see, you can see that he has the chops to be a dramatic actor. And that's why something like this hits me even a little harder because I don't want to see him struggle in dramatic work because unfortunately the way of the business, people are going to be like, yeah, I mean, he can't. And it's like, there's enough. It's always about what you did recently. Like, what mm -hmm. have you done for me lately? And that's the problem because this movie is on paper should have been successful and it should have been a better film. But unfortunately, I think it misses the mark in a lot of ways. Yeah. What did you think about his performance? I didn't mind it. I thought that he tried his best. I think that he got bogged down. And I don't know if it was his choice or the director's choice to make him not have any comedic relief. There was no moment for Sandler to really flex that muscle. And I think in in his best roles, it's because he is able to like itch that like 
itch it a little bit of like, okay, I need to do something like comedic and like just get it out so that I can then transition to a dramatic film. Because if you are just like heavy, heavy drama, 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 I don't think he's the actor for that. Yeah, I would agree with and that. And so like a part of me is thinking, what would this film be like if there was somebody who who leans toward just the pure drama and doesn't really do any comedy? Yeah, I was thinking, imagine if this movie was directed by like the Daniels mm. and that. But I think the tone well, see, again, like, the tone would have been entirely different. And that's where I feel like that would have been great to see. Um, I mean, even the Safties now he's worked with the Safties multiple yeah. times, like seeing something like that would be interesting. Um, I know, like this film was just so literal. Yeah. And I was I hoping for a little bit more magic or even just um, or even just like the way they introduced Yanush, like this huge spider. It's so literal of just like a huge spider in an airplane, in a spaceship, I mean. And there's no question of like, like he's hallucinating. He's not hallucinating. Like what's going on here? And instead it's just like, nope, there's a spider and he's now going to have therapy with him. Yeah. And now you watch as a man learns to love himself and his wife. Well, that's why I, for the movie, for the movie to be so literal and then at the same time have such a plot that's heavy on introspectiveness Mm -hmm. and like the communication of oneself and the universe. It felt like at times also, it felt like an episode of, um, Holy shit. What is it called? The Neil deGrasse Tyson show. You know what I'm talking about? Is it called Cosmos? I don't know what you're talking or about. It's like it's like a docu-series where like Neil deGrasse Tyson walks you through like the millennia and like what is out there in the world. And there were moments where I felt like Paul Dano's delivery was very much reminiscent of mm. like that sort of tone. And it, it feels like something you want to lull yourself, like yeah. you said, to sleep sort of. Like <laughs> you're just there to like learn the bigger – like the bigger – meaning of what the universe is and mm-hmm. how at the same time we're just a speck, but we still have to be introspective to ourselves and what comes first because so much of it is based on star talk, star talk. Oh, okay. Zach. Um, but so much of it is like Yanu's trying to get through to him about like, if you care so much about your wife, why are you here? Like that. And it's supposed to be a personal story, but there's nothing about his character that gets you invested in anything with that plus carrie mulligan's character is incredibly underwritten so she's also so unlikable yeah like well there's just nothing really there's to her nothing character. to her because also and this is just a core question you marry an astronaut he is going to have to go to space so like w- why is that like the main confrontation and question amongst their relationship is that he shouldn't have gone to space yeah like you don't you just don't accidentally become an astronaut and then be miserable when you're up there. People that become an astronaut, they want to do this and their family know that so they support them. And if they don't, then like that relationship doesn't last. But I don't know. I just feel like uh the motives were very all over the place. I also am just kind of tired of this story of like this for me was the exact story that Black Mirror did an episode about. Um, somebody had said in one of the reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, I had seen that they said this would work better as an episode of Black Mirror. It practically was like the episode when they have their bodies. The, uh, the Aaron Paul episode. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Like it felt so much like that to me because it's the they resentful. Probably the same, they probably use the same set. I'm not going to lie. It, it was so similar. It was like the resentful, uh, wife who is stuck on earth and is upset that he went. And then he's up there dealing with questions of like loneliness, but he's not dealing. He's not telling his wife how he feels because he resents her. And then it's just all this resentment. And you're like, OK, I'm reading. All right. So I, I'm this is really interesting to me. So I'm reading uh, this is Wikipedia, but I'm reading the background of the book and it feels like so much of the narrative focuses on him trying to escape his past which is the things with his father and dealing with um the uh, communist party of czechoslovakia which okay. zach actually like ironically brought up as a joke before we started recording but like that is a s- small part of the movie it seems like a very heavy part of what this movie is is him trying to escape his past and what his dealings with the and there are moments of that right like there moments, are moments but very quick if you're not listening because you've lulled but out that's what makes me also think and i'm so glad you found that thank you for finding like the information on the movie being stuck 
because to me, I feel like there are three different versions of this movie. Yeah. So it's the political one, it's the romance one, which I think they tried to do of like, oh, the wife, the husband and wife like miss each other, but they also hate each other. And then the third movie, well, what do you think the like third version is? Him dealing with like his father. Yeah. I mean, th this also talks about how he starts to drink extensively and becomes depressed. Like you don't see that at all. No, really you in just the movie. know that he's not sleeping. Yeah. So interesting. You know what I wish? I wish that they had shown a little bit more time of him by himself, fully isolated before they introduced uh, the spider. Can you say that one more time? I wish that they had given him more time being isolated and showing us him being what alone. What he was going through. What he was going the, through alone before. Yanush comes in relatively quickly fast. in this movie, like 15 minutes in probably, right? Yeah, and so you haven't fully, like you don't know, okay, is he actually spiraling or is this just what happens to people when they've been isolated for almost six months? Yeah, he also hires a spy to follow Lenka in the book. See, that's so that's so interesting <laughs> to me. I agree. It's a way better, based on, I'm going to read the book. Okay, let's read the let's book. Let's read the book, everybody. You only go see this movie now. <laughs> they um, focused way too much yeah. on his relationship with Yanush, and they should have focused on his paranoia then. Yeah. Because you don't really – you get it in spurts. Yeah, but it's but more then, paranoia of like what is the spider doing yeah. here? Yeah, and I think that's why I, – I think that – It's too literal. I think that it's a big part of the problem is direction mm -hmm. and, and the script. I mean, it, but the script, it's hard because you don't know how many versions of this movie could have been written and what was mangled in mm -hmm. post-production. And, and like I said, reshoots and things like that. I mean, it probably didn't require like the only person that needed to come back for this movie and reshoots was Sandler. Mm. When you think about it, like Carrie's barely in the movie and you said she was pregnant when she was filming it. She was. She was actually so, pregnant. Yeah. And then Dano is just a voice role. Yeah, he's just. So it wouldn't require that much for Netflix to – and maybe that's why they held it for so long because they were trying to get it in the right spot. I mean the movie or the book I should say is a – it says uh, – do, 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 do. where is this? It was just saying how it's won a bunch of awards and it's like highly regarded, the book. And the film it doesn't seem like – Maybe they should – did they have the writer of the book on – as a writer for the film? No. Just See, based on just based on the film. I also think that that's needed sometimes. Yeah, when... principal photography began April nineteenth, twenty twenty one, and wrapped July first, twenty twenty one. That's crazy. That's yeah. kind of crazy. It premiered at Berlin in February of this year. Um, it was originally planned to release in twenty twenty three, but then I guess they wanted to wait because of the actor strike. Um, they shouldn't have. And there's been a just, little they bit. They should just put this out quietly and been like, here you go. Yeah, it's been, it's been, there's been a little bit, but that's the other thing. There's only been a little bit of marketing for the movie, regardless from Sandler and Dano. So maybe because they know. I mean, maybe. They know. These actors know when it's a miss. They know. Dakota Johnson knew with Madam Webb. Oh, absolutely. And she did great on her pe press tour of being like, yeah, I don't. And I, now even I more known. even more so, she's like saying in magazine articles, she's like, I'm done. I'm never making any other movies like this. Um, so good for she her. She deserves better. She does deserve better. <laughs> she's a great actress. Um, is there anything else to talk about with this movie? I don't. I don't think this is a bad movie. I just, it's not for me. Or maybe it would be for me if I had read the book prior and I knew what I was getting into. Yeah, I uh, especially in live in like real time reading about Spaceman and Bohemian, sort of the way that they went on their own path with this version of the movie. Um, I'm a bit disappointed, even more so, I think now than I was, especially because this was on my top ten. Man, I, know. I was excited. For what this number movie. was this? Do you remember? I don't remember, but I think it was in the lower. I think it was anywhere from like eight to ten. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just with Sandler, I just I like to see him do well in these types of things, because as great as he is comedically, I think he should be given more opportunities to do things like this. And I love I mean, his next two movies he's doing are with Noah Baumbach and, and uh, Benny Safdie. So I think he's still going to sort gonna of kill it. go in that direction. Um, and then you can still pump out your Leos and you're not so invited to my bat mitzvahs and you do your thing. I love those. Sandman. His, you make, yeah, you make your money. You do your thing. And then you turn around and you you put out great performances. He should have been nominated for Uncut Gems. I'm angry. Um, should we do scores? Let's get him to scores. All right, you go first. I'm going to stick with what I initially was thinking, and I'm going to give this a five. 
it was mid, so I'm going mid. I think that's fair. Yeah. And it, now after reading what I just read, I'm also going to agree with you. I'm going to give it a five. Wow. You dropped a whole number. I dropped a whole number from the previous day. We, I didn't, you know, it's funny. We didn't talk about the one thing that I really loved about this movie, which what? is the visuals. Oh, that's the one thing I agree with you. It's on. a redeeming yeah. quality of the film. The visuals are fantastic, though. I didn't love the flashback sequences. Um, everything regarding the space and the Chopra cloud and th that incredible sort of um, visual that they're able to put on screen, even on like Netflix, like they do a good job of sort of setting the tone for that. And even that like that little bit that they're on that world, I was like somewhat interested. Mm -hmm. I was like, where are they going with this? But you get nothing of it. So the movie's mid, according to us, the movie's mid, according to Rotten Tomatoes. That's it. Some people probably like it. Maybe. I don't know. Is the movie mid to you guys? Have you seen it? <laughs> Have you seen Spaceman on Netflix? Let us know in the comments because we're curious. This movie came out also the same day as Dune Part 2. So tough, tough crowd, tough um, sort of counter programming, but also two sci-fi movies in the same day. One's highly anticipated i don't know maybe maybe a mistake by netflix but let us know in the comments if you guys have seen this movie or if you guys haven't seen it yet and you guys are anticipating it were you guys really looking forward to this movie like me or was it something that just sort of flew under the radar for you um what did you think of adam sandler's performance did you think Kyrie mulligan was underutilized what did you think about paul dano's soothing spider voice as yanush um let us know in the comments please if you guys can also give this video a like we are the culture wave media network you guys can subscribe to us we have plenty of other reviews news and other things in film and television upcoming for you guys you can also follow us on our social media pages we're at cinema wave media on instagram as well as on tiktok facebook and threads we're also at underscore culture wave media and at jersey's finest pod on instagram as well just signing off i am darian scalamoni i am liz seiko and we'll see you guys next time